So what is up guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. iPhone 14 Pro, three months later. We're getting close to the holidays and believe it or not, this phone right here is still a hard piece to find. You know, you can still grab it if you catch one in the morning, you know, before the store opens. Sometimes they get a stock in, but you know, if you try to deliver this thing, you're gonna be waiting a couple of weeks though. I mean, the stock has been terrible this year for the 14 pro models but that's why you got to order them when they first come out if you really want one and if you can get one at that time if not i've heard a lot of people going with the 13 pros and 14 pros but today we're here to talk about this experience three months later i already did my 14 pro max we're, we're going to begin just by talking about do i believe it's been worth it when it comes to the price point. And I think, yes, if you're coming from an older iPhone, coming from the iPhone 13 Pro of last year, absolutely not. I don't think it was worth the extra cash if you have an iPhone 13 Pro from last year. It just, yes, it has dynamic island. Yes, the cameras have a raw mode and they're a little bit better, but I really haven't had an improved life experience using that phone right there over the 13 Pro and the 14 Pro. I do love the Dynamic Island. I do think it's a pretty cool, neat new feature. It's a good you know, way to hold off until we can get an all screen design, um, but we probably won't see that for several years. But at the same time, it's been pretty useful in certain areas. It's a cool party trick to talk about with this phone, although it's definitely not a necessary feature for a lot of people. I think you're gonna be just fine if you didn't have that. Now when talking about the iPhone 14 Pro in terms of the build quality, the cameras got even bigger. As you can see right there, stay in a focus, they got a little bit bigger. So every year these cameras are getting bigger and bigger. Um, the edges are stainless steel, we already know that, and the back is that pretty much everybody's doing this now, the matte textured rear glass so you don't get fingerprints, although these sides still fingerprint magnets. The phone's build quality is heavy, substantial, and it feels like what you're paying for it. How many times I'm gonna say that over and over again? Several months later, I don't pick this up and, and think that I'm holding a cheap phone by no means. I feel like I'm using the best of the best out there at the same time, because we've had this kind of build for a while, it's not as exciting as something like a flipping or folding phone, I would say. Those things are a little bit cooler feeling, but. This still feels like if you're going to do a slab smartphone, this is going to be about as premium as you're going to get. Now, let's take it on the display here three months later. Super bright. So bright, in fact. You know, I don't even think Apple needs to go up from here. This, this could be the cutoff point. If they go to 2,500 nits, it just doesn't make sense because I find myself having to reduce the white point and lower this phone down even more than I'm used to doing with other phones because it's so bright. However, that does pay off in sunlight because it's very easy to see in sunlight. At the same time, that increased brightness has lowered my battery life experience over the past three months. I noticed that if I have it too high, that thing really starts to drain a little bit quicker than I would like. Apple still hasn't really increased the overall sharpness of this panel. It's still got a similar pixels and resolution as 13 Pro and 12 Pro, but it's very smooth and um, super smooth with the 120 Hz, just like the 13 Pro, doesn't really make it feel too different, but also doesn't make it feel bad whatsoever. It feels super premium. At the same time, the dynamic island with this display definitely rears its head, and I actually find myself, even three months later, looking at this more than I ever looked at the notch. So while I didn't really love the notch, and while I think this is a cool party trick right here to show people what this new iPhone can do, I do find myself staring at that quite a bit more. So it is distracting by comparison to pretty much any, you know, of the other iterations of iPhone before. So keep that in mind. At the same time, if you are using this phone for basically anything, you know, you want to use this display for, it's going to be a premium feel on the whole. So do keep that in mind. So I want to switch gears now to talking about the battery life with this phone. I do not really put on low power mode all too often with the 14 Pro because I don't want to get rid of the 120 hertz experience and I didn't really need it too often. The battery life on this phone has been good. I'm not gonna call it great. I do believe it's a slightly worse than the 13 Pro in my experience, but it's gotten better with 
the recent updates that Apple has put out for this device. It can make it through a full day quite easily, actually, if you're a medium user. Um, if you are using that phone heavy, though, you're on social all day, you're taking photos all day, you're just really going hard on the device. I just don't find it to be a phone that the heaviest users are going to want. You know, the heaviest users are going to want the Max phone with the bigger battery with a little bit longer lasting, you know, battery life. That's something that you'll consider getting if you really, you know, you're on your phone all day, just get the Max. But, you know, people on their phone all day off and on and stuff like that, the 14 Pro is excellent here. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the software. You know, there's not really a lot to talk about these days when it comes to software besides new feature drops that come out in latest 16 updates. You know, 16.2 brought the Freeform application, which was a big deal over here. And there's more stuff that it brought, but I'm not going to get into everything in this video. At the same time, besides feature drops, you know, this is the same experience as any other iPhone. There's like a million different iPhone configurations now, sizes and all kinds of stuff. And I'm just kind of getting tired of talking about, you know, iOS is basically the same thing, app library, grid of icons, widgets, and a few new features every single year. Um, 16 has been a little bit, I would say, buggy at the start, but it's getting better. But I've still found a couple glitches and crashes here and there. And on the iPad, there's also some weird app loading problems as well. So this is not the most stable iOS I've ever seen, but iOS is constantly being updated all the time. So sometimes you're gonna get a stable version, sometimes you're not. 16, the latest 16 updates have increased the overall battery life though and performance. So that's pretty good. Talking about performance, I want to switch gears a little bit over here to the actual performance of the A16 Bionic. It's something that, you know, people will be like, hey man, is that a reason to get it? Because, you know, every year to put a new chip. But the thing is, is Apple's chips are so good that we even show my older iPhone videos and we talk about how you know, the other, other ones are still performing well. So that's not a knock against this. This one is really the most powerful iPhone out there. And if you run a benchmark, it's going to do it the fastest. It's going to play a game the fastest, load the fastest. But at the same time, when it comes to what you're experiencing and what you're actually using in the real world, all I can say is that the iPhone experience with the A-series chips are probably the smoothest phones on the market and probably the most reliable in performance. And that goes for most of them. So I don't think getting the 14 Pro just to say you have an A16 chip is the real reason to pick this phone, even though if you're keeping it long term, it is a good reason. I think the next chip Apple brings out is going to be far more impressive. They might bring an M series or maybe just a more improved performance. This year was kind of just a minor change. Now, in terms of the storage, I think about the storage quite a bit on these phones because they definitely cost you a lot more if you want to go get some more storage for the iPhone 14 Pro. So I got the 256 gig. This one's not the highest, but you start get up to that one terabyte version. This phone is definitely getting quite costly. So do keep in mind that iPhones tax you on the storage. So do keep in mind that although that storage is incredibly quick, you know, it can run out fast. You can see 169 gigs used if you're doing 4K, if you have a lot of stored photos in your iCloud and stuff like that. So sometimes you're just going to need that extra storage. Um, I think on the next iPhone, we might see a two terabyte model though. So let's go over to the camera. I'm not going to go into everything in depth. We've done this before in terms of, you know, talking about this pro camera, my 14 pro review and stuff like that. But I really have been appreciating my multiple ways to go ahead and zoom. So I could go one X, two X, three X ultra wide macro modes video performance has been stellar with the 4k 60 and stuff like that i really appreciate the improved front-facing camera that came to this device and also cinematic video got better as well on the front and the rear so i think more than ever this phone is really feeling like a pro experience um, i also would like apple to do a little bit more of a pro camera like i like the camera setup but i like to see them put a little bit more pro controls in there for the pro user like maybe some manual tweaking, a little bit more manual tweaking right in the camera app because we're still seeing this where you have to go in the settings to change stuff, but you have the Pro Raw 48 megapixel. And if you wanna take iPhone photos and you wanna blow them up and put them on a printout, this is the phone to get right here. I also wanted to mention that when it comes to the actual phone call quality 
and overall, you know, reception strength, this has been as good as it has ever been. And I also can tell you three months later, I have found these speakers to be quite impressive by comparison to not the 13 Pro, but something like the older 12 Pro and the 11 Pro. The speakers got a little bit better here for the iPhone 14 Pro. The Deep Purple also, what do I think about this? Well, I can tell you, I, I kind of like it. It's got a deep, you know, pro look to it. Um, it's that color though that is going to be gone next year and it's you're going to know that's the older phone so do keep that in mind if you are picking this up right here at the end of the day i'm going to wrap it up here i don't want this to go over 12 minutes the iphone 14 pro here three months later my experience hasn't changed too much from my prior video with this but you know this phone is a hot seller it's the right size for a lot of people it has all the new features you would want but I don't think if you have anything like a 12 Pro or a 13 Pro, it's a must upgrade. If you do have an 11 Pro, go for it. But if you're just tired of waiting on these to be in stock and stuff like that, I mean, we're only like nine months away now from the next iPhone. Just grab yourself a 13 Pro and be on with it. But if you really seriously need the latest and greatest features, the 14 Pro three months later, I would say on a scale of zero to 100 has been about a 95 overall. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you very much for watching and peace.